Docker is a popular containerization platform that provides a consistent and portable way to develop, ship, and run applications. With Docker, you can easily create, deploy, and manage containers on any platform, including your local machine, the cloud, or on-premises servers. In this comprehensive video, we'll dive into the world of Docker, a revolutionary platform that has transformed the way applications are built, tested, and deployed in modern software development. We'll first take a look into the need of virtual machines and containers. We will then explore some of the important aspects of Docker architecture, from Docker Engine, Docker Images to Docker File, and how they all work together, enabling seamless deployment by packaging the application and its dependencies into portable container that can be easily deployed on any Docker-compatible platform. So let's dive deep into the world of Docker. First, let's talk about computers. A computer contains several vital components. At the core is the central processing unit or CPU responsible for performing calculations and executing instructions. The random access memory temporarily stores the applications and data you are actively using, allowing for quick access. Additionally, a storage device such as hard disk drive or solid state drive is included to store the data that you may need in the future. However, to harness the power of this hardware, we require an operating system. The operating system or OS acts as a bridge between the hardware and the software applications you use. The OS provides a graphical user interface and other services to enhance user experience. But at its core, the OS includes a kernel, a fundamental component that directly interacts with the bare metal or the hardware. The kernel manages the allocation of resources, facilitates communication between hardware components and provides a stable platform for software applications to run smoothly. Virtual machines or VMs were conceptualized to address the need for running multiple operating systems on a single physical machine. Think of a large room that can be divided into smaller compartments. A computer with large capacity can be divided into smaller units called virtual machines, much like this room. Each virtual machine appears to have its own dedicated hardware. But in reality, it is just imitating it. Since these machines are virtual, allocating and deallocating resources is a simple process. And this innovative approach has revolutionized the way we utilize server hardware, maximizing its efficiency and versatility. VMs offer several key challenges. Firstly, they enable the consolidation of multiple workloads into a single physical server, optimizing resource allocation and reducing hardware cost. By leveraging VMs, organizations can achieve significant cost savings and improve the return of investment. I have also touched upon this topic in my PayPal use case video where I explained PayPal's scaling story and how they manage billions of transactions with just 8 virtual machines. Secondly, VMs provide a robust isolation between different applications or workloads running within them. This isolation ensures that if one application running in a VM encounters an issue or crashes, other applications remain unaffected. This isolation mechanism enhances the stability and reliability of the overall system minimizing the risk of cascading failures. And thirdly, VMs offer superior portability compared to software installed directly on the hardware. VMs can be easily migrated between different physical servers or cloud platforms, providing greater flexibility and agility in managing IT infrastructure. This portability simplifies tasks such as disaster recovery, load balancing, and application migration, enabling businesses to adapt quickly to changing requirements. Here is a breakdown of how VMs work. The foundation of virtualization is the hypervisor. It is a software program that sits directly on physical hardware and acts as a virtual control panel. And there are two main types of hypervisors. Bare metal hypervisor is installed directly on the server hardware, replacing the traditional operating system and it offers the best performance for VMs. Hosted hypervisor runs as an application on top of an existing operating system, more common for desktops or personal use. Now, you define the resources such as CPU, memory, or storage you want to allocate to each VM. These resources are carved out from the physical machine's total capacity. When a VM boots up, the hypervisor provides it with simulated hardware components like virtual CPUs, memory, and network interfaces. These virtual components map to the physical resources of the underlying machine. Now, talking about guest operating system, each VM runs its own guest operating system, example, Windows or Linux. This operating system is unaware that it's running inside a virtual environment and behaves just like it would be on a physical machine. Software engineers heavily use virtual machines to address the problem of environment inconsistencies. 
Imagine the frustration of code working perfectly on your local machine, but mysteriously falling on the production server. Traditional application development often involves setting up specific environments on each developer's machine to ensure the code runs correctly. These environments can vary significantly due to the differences in operating system versions, libraries, and configurations. And this inconsistency leads to bugs and compatibility issues when deploying the application to a production server with a different environment. VM let developers create a virtualized environment on their local machine that closely mimic the production server setup, be it the operating system, libraries, or the production server's configurations. And this reduced the work on my machine problem by increasing the likelihood of code behaving the same in both places. VMs also provided isolation from other applications and development projects on the developer's machine, minimizing the risk of conflicts. Team could now spin up VMs with specific configurations to test the application under different scenarios. Now, while VMs help developers create more consistent environments for application development, they weren't a perfect solution. VMs come with the overhead due to the need of full guest operating system making them resource intensive and slow to start up. Additionally, VM portability is limited by the underlying hypervisor technology. And containers address these limitations by offering a more lightweight and efficient approach. Containers share the host system's kernel, resulting in significantly smaller footprint and faster startup times. Furthermore, containers offer greater portability compared to VMs as they are not tied to a specific hypervisor allowing them to run on any compatible platform. And this portability simplifies the deployment and management of applications across different environments. Docker is a popular containerization platform that leverages the features and benefits of containers. Docker simplifies the packaging, distribution, and management of containerized applications, making it a preferred choice for modern software development and deployment. By leveraging Docker, developers can easily build, test, and deploy applications in a consistent and efficient manner, facilitating faster and more agile development processes. Let's explore Docker in more detail. Docker operates using a client-server architecture, where the Docker client interacts with Docker daemon. The Docker daemon plays a crucial role in managing intricate tasks related to constructing, executing, and distributing Docker. Note that both the Docker client and daemon can reside on the same system, providing a convenient setup. However, you also have the flexibility to establish a connection between a Docker client and a remote Docker daemon granting access to containers running on a different system. The communication between the Docker client and daemon is facilitated through a RESTful API, which provides a standardized interface for interacting with Docker platform. This API can leverage either Unix sockets or network interfaces to facilitate communication. Notably, Docker Compose, Another Docker client offers additional capabilities for working with applications composed of multiple containers, simplifying the management and deployment of complex architectures. Docker architecture consists of several core components. The Docker engine acts as an orchestrator. It runs in the background on your system and manages the entire container lifecycle from pulling and building Docker images to running and stopping containers. It is a server with long running daemon process called Docker. The Docker client is a command line interface tool that allows you to interact with the Docker daemon. It provides a consistent way to manage Docker containers, images, networks, and volumes. The Docker client is typically installed on your local machine, while the Docker daemon runs on the host machine where you want to create and run containers. Basically, the Docker client can pull images from a registry, create, start, stop, and remove containers, build images from Docker files, and push images to the registry. Think of a Docker image as a blueprint for a container. It's a read-only archive that contains everything needed to run an application. It has an operating system, which is usually a lightweight Linux distribution like Alpine Linux. It has an application code, such as the core code base of your application. It can also have any dependencies, such as any libraries or frameworks your application needs to run or any configurations or settings specific to how the application runs within the container. And a container is a running instance of a Docker image. It is like a single self-contained application with its own isolated environment. Here is what makes containers special. They are lightweight, isolated, and portable. Since containers share the host kernel, they are much more lightweight than virtual machines. And each container runs on its own isolated space ensuring applications don't conflict with each other. Docker images are also portable across different systems with Docker installed. Basically, the Docker daemon or Docker listens for Docker API request, 
such as Docker build, Docker run, Docker push, Docker pull, etc. The Docker client or Docker is the primary way that many Docker users interact with Docker. When you use commands such as Docker run, the client sends the command to the Docker, which carries them out and processes it. Internally, the Docker command uses a Docker REST API, the Docker host used to provide an environment to execute and run containerized applications. It contains the Docker daemon, images, container, networks, volumes, and storage. Now, a Docker registry is used to store Docker images. Docker Hub is in fact a public registry that anyone can use, and Docker is configured to look for images on Docker Hub by default. You can in fact even run your own private registry. So when you use the Docker pull or Docker run commands, the required images are pulled from the configured registry. And when you use the Docker push command, your image is pushed into your configured registry. Important things to remember are that you can have many containers based on the same image. This highlights the power of images as blueprints. Since images are read-only, you can spin up multiple instances of the same application environment without conflict. And this is great for scaling and having different instances running in slightly different ways. Also, images are read-only and containers get a writable layer. Understanding this is a key to managing data in Docker. The image is static, but you want a container's changes such as log files or calculation, etc. to persist. This writable layer is unique to each container. And this is how Docker preserves data even if the container itself is stopped or is removed. Registries are for collaborations. Registries like Docker Hub create a way to share pre-configured images. Teams can share custom tools across environments and anyone can pull common base images like those for Ubuntu or Nginx without starting from scratch. Now, to get started with Docker, you need to install Docker Desktop. Docker Desktop is a free and open source application that provides a graphical user interface for managing Docker containers. Once you have installed Docker Desktop, you can start creating and running containers. And to create a container, you basically need to create a Docker file. A Docker file is a text file that contains instructions for building a container. And once you have created a Docker file, you can build a container using the command. The command will read the instructions in Docker file and create a container based on those instructions. Once you have built a container, you can run it using the command. The command will start the container and run the application inside the container. So let's say you want to share your custom image with others or deploy it to a server. You can push your image to the Docker registry using the Docker push command followed by the image name and the desired registry location. Pushing the image makes it accessible to others who can then pull it and run containers based on it. In my next video, I'll provide a comprehensive hands-on lab overview of Docker, demystifying essential concepts and their functions. We'll delve into Docker Compose and orchestration tools like Docker Swarm and Kubernetes, which become relevant as you manage large number of containers across machines to handle deployment, scaling, and load balancing of microservices.